Avengers Endgame is out. It's April 26th. The finale of this arc of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, because we all know they're not done milking this sacred cow. Thanos killed half of everybody, and you know what? Ant-Man was in the quantum zone. He's coming back. He wasn't in the snap, and people who weren't in the snap are coming back, and uh, uh, Captain Marvel's coming back, and Thor's coming back, and uh, uh, they're probably gonna win. They're gonna, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make this prediction. Thanos doesn't win. That's my prediction for Avengers uh, Endgame. I don't know, might be true. You heard it here first, folks. We, what I've seen in the trailer, it doesn't look so good for Tony Stark. It doesn't look too good for Tony Stark. The thing about Tony Stark is he is the, the center, I think, in a lot of ways of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He is the prime mover behind everything that has happened for Marvel and in these movies. We see him, he's alone in outer space in what looks like Slave One, sort of. He's recording into a helmet, and it doesn't look good. It looks like he's gonna die. I know I said no more surprises, but I was really hoping to pull off one last one. I thought if we're gonna do a drink for Endgame, uh, it should really be Tony Stark's drink. Now, fun thing about Tony Stark, we get to see him drink. Tony Stark likes to drink. Sort of like a team. Earth's mightiest heroes type thing. He seems to gravitate towards scotch. In fact, if I'm not mistaken, in the first Iron Man movie, upon the successful completion of a sale of very expensive weapons, <laughs> be throwing one of these in with every purchase of 500 million or more. It's a piece. There's a bottle in that movie that looks like Lagavulin 16. We know he drinks scotch. Maybe Lagavulin is his brand. Maybe that's what he goes for, the 16. Endgame, I think of uh, finality, last things. Feels like a really ripe opportunity to do a last word variation. And so that's what this is. This is going to be my endgame. I'm canceling the show. And we're gonna make a drink I call the end game. It's a Lagavulin based last word variation. Uh, it's a pretty simple drink. We're gonna shake this drink. This is shake and drink, so we shake the drink. I will start. I will start by producing a lemon. I will cut the lemon in half. We want one ounce of lemon juice. One ounce of maraschino. I don't know why, but I really want to do this like Carnival Barker voice. One ounce, one single ounce of maraschino. Watch as I produce the clear viscous liquid from the bottle and pour it into the jigger and from the jigger into the shaker. There is nothing up my sleeve. I have no idea where that's coming from. I can't help myself. Now here's a qu quiz. We're supposed to go in order of expense. You know, from cheap to expensive. That's like best practices for working bars at home. It doesn't matter. I guess the chartreuse in this bottle, in this drink, would be the cheaper of the two. The Lagavulin's like 117 a bottle or something like that. Don't tell Meredith we spent that on a bottle of scotch. One ounce of the chartreuse. One ounce of smoky, peaty, manly Lagavulin. What a great... Lagavulin, giving you... Giving you two and a half stars on that cork. That's pretty good cork. It's not a great cork. I like this one. <laughs> That's kind of what's so fun about last word variations, is that they're all equal parts, and they all basically have the same format and you can swap ingredients out and wind up with wildly different results that all kind of work. It's pretty neat. Shake this drink. Don't always double strain, but I saw in my shaker here that I did a pretty good job of pulverizing that ice. And I definitely want this to be nice and clear. While this should do a good job of it, if I want to pour quickly, I can double strain. Uh, that is the drink. And I'm going to garnish this drink with a little fresh grated black pepper from my pepper pot, i.e. pepper pots. You could also do a rim. You could do a peppered rim. Let's see how this came out.
Wow, what a journey. That is a, that's a neat drink. It is very, um, this is, this is such like nerdy thing to say. It's like a very cerebral drink. Like it's not something where you sip it and are immediately, for me anyway, it doesn't immediately connect with my pleasure centers of my brain. I'm not just like, oh, bleh, I just want to guzzle that. You know, it's not a Mai Tai or something and for me. For some people, I think it will be. What do I get there? What is that? The chartreuse, like pepper, the black pepper and the chartreuse kind of really come up front strong. Um, I get that first. The lemon and the maraschino don't, really disappear. They kind of help marry the other flavors together. That evolves into, yeah, you do get that sourness from the lemon. Um, and the maraschino is bringing in the sweetness, which in this drink is sort of the, the thing that holds it all together, I guess. It's not like you taste maraschino in itself. It just disappears and, and supports the other flavors. So that, that pepper note, I, for me, chartreuse really tastes a lot like black peppercorns. I would not be surprised if that wasn't a key ingredient in its pr production. Plus the grated pepper, the fresh cracked pepper on the top. That's the first things I get. I love that. It's a wonderful savory kind of thing that happens in this drink. What's funny is there's something in there that I'm actually registering as a slightly saltiness, but there's no salt in this drink that I'm aware of unless salt is a component of chartreuse, which would be weird. And so that gives way into the smoky, briny, leathery notes of the Lagavulin, but in a way that I find much more approachable than a neat or, or Lagavulin on the ice or some, on rocks or something like that. It's a pretty great drink. That's a fun drink with a nice long evolution, very savory. It's not like sweet, it's not comfort food. This is, it's savory. It's on the savory end of the spectrum. I don't know how else to explain it. It's very, uh, it's culinary in that way. Who do I think has the power level to kill Thanos? I mean, it's Thor, it's Captain Marvel, it's, um, it's, uh, uh, the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. Those are your three big, and, and not, although I think that they, he gets underutilized, like, I think that certainly the Hulk, uh, as far as comics lore goes, could. I don't think he would. I think it's gotta be somebody else. Um, in the comic, it is, uh, Adam Warlock undoes Thanos. Um, and I should say undoes, right? Because nobody actually gets killed in comic books for the most part. They all come back and whatever. I think Captain America is going to wind up being so instrumental in Thanos' death that it will actually be Captain America. What if it was just like, it's Mystique. That's what's going to happen. They're going to reveal the X-Men Avengers crossover. Mystique! It's going to turn out to be Mystique! Um, my Marvel movies ranked. I'm going to rank the Marvel movies. I'm going to rank them. Okay? Um... Here's my favorite Marvel movies. I'm gonna go with, okay. Spider-Man 3. Um, oh, oh, uh, Fantastic Four, The Silver Surfer one. That one, yes. Uh, was it the third X-Men movie when he moved the bridge? That one? Um, there was a, um, did you guys see the version of Captain America from the 90s though? That one is really something special. That one is probably my favorite Marvel film. 